Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are taking a look at some more mods, tools and add-ons and hopefully you guys will find something that you like in this video. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, guys, so the first thing we are taking a look at is this screen right here. Um, this is a new add-on for the channel, one that I've been following pretty closely for a while, just haven't really gotten around to, to uh, showing it off yet. Um, this is a UI modification, okay? A link to this will be down in the description below. Now, it does a couple of things. First off, when you first launch the simulator, it no longer goes through all the world map updates and things like that. It stays on one static screen, which I personally prefer. Now, I don't know if it was uh, a placebo effect or if it truly slightly increased or decreased, I should say, the load time uh, from the time you hit start to the time you got to the main menu. That could very easily, guys, just be placebo effect, so don't put too much weight in that. However, what I do really enjoy about this is the new layout. It is very, very nice. You have everything right in front of you, although I don't know what KI control is. What is KI control? Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. Um, your all your flight stuff. Gotcha. Okay. And this is the first time that I have used it. You guys are seeing it for the first time here on the channel. This is as far as I've gotten into it, but I really like this layout significantly better. Everything's nice and, and, and concise and, and, and a very easily uh, registered format here. Now checking out the world map here. Um, looks like we got a few things here that might be different. Now the one thing that I do know for a fact is that we have um, some weather presets that are also included with this particular modification. So it's nothing too huge guys. Um, I really do enjoy the weather presets i'm going to be taking a look at some of these because i have to say that the default weather presets as we all know they're lacking um but it is also cool to the fact that you can make your own but that takes a lot of time it really does i was messing around with that uh, about a month ago and i just like eh, i got too much to do to, to to create weather presets so i'm very very grateful for the community and those of you guys who really dive into that for us because it saves me a ton of time um but uh the just little things here, transparency differences. Um, as far as the overall uh, layout, I just like it better. Um, obviously, I'll leave this up to you guys and how you want to move forward here. Um, it's just the main menu, I think, that is where the massive differences are. But it's just it's a it's a UI enhancement that I find to be um, much more uh, convenient for me. So like normally you have to come up here, find your general options. You can see some of the menus and everything and screenshots are a little bit different now. Um, but I do enjoy having everything right here at the bottom where I can get straight to what I'm looking for. Um, I find that to be much, much nicer, much, much, just, just a little bit smoother. And I know this is something small. This isn't, this isn't something that's huge. It's not game breaking or anything like that, but something that I've been uh, pushing off, trying out. And I finally decided, you know what, what the heck, let's get after it and load it up today. And I did so. And I have to say, I really like it. I was, it was, it was a really nice welcome when we first got into the sim here. for the Beach King Air 350i. Now, this modification is absolutely fantastic. So let's go through some of the key points in the latest update. I'm not gonna talk about everything it does, but definitely talk about the latest update. Uh, reworks the flight model to be uh, compatible with Sim Update 8. He does make flight model changes to make the aircraft fly more realistic. So those were updated to work with the latest uh, Sim Update. Thrust was reduced by 30% to make it possible to now hold the aircraft still with the uh, pedal brakes while uh, pushing the engine uh, to max power. Taxiing and takeoff acceleration are now more realistic. Increase the turn radius of the front wheel and activated differential braking. As many of you know, with the default aircraft, the nose wheel steering on them is very, very um, limited. Uh, these aircraft should be able to turn a heck of a lot tighter than what they do in the simulator. Uh, and JD is one of those ones who has improved that uh, functionality with his modification as many of the other modders do. Um, and then finally, differential braking. For those of you who may not be familiar with what that term means, it means that when you depress the left brake, only the left brake 
uh, will actually lock and right brake, etc. This allows you to do a couple different things. It enables you to make extremely tight turns. For example, if I wanted to make a very, very tight right turn, I would depress only the right toe brake while adding power, in this case, to the left engine. Um, both engines, but if you add a little bit more to the left engine, you'll turn even tighter. Essentially, what it does, though, is allows the aircraft to spin on just that uh, wheel that's locked up. So the aircraft basically turns in place uh, on that right wheel. It uses that right wheel as a pivot point, and you can do, obviously, left or right wheel. doesn't matter. Um, but uh, differential braking can also help you in the event that you uh, lost control of your nose wheel steering. And then many other aircraft are actually turn like that by design. The P-51 Mustang being an example in real world, it turns through differential braking. Um, so anyway, moving on, uh, slightly reduce the rudder effectivity. Um, apparently the rudder activity, uh, was, uh, too intense. Now I say apparently because I never dove very deep into the King Air 350i. So, you know, I'm, that's just my assumption that is again, to bring it closer to realistic, um, performances. Um, slight reduction to the N1 torque table, making it now possible to over torque the engines. Now, some of you may be like, oh, why would I want to be excited about being able to damage my aircraft and crash, you know? Um, but it, it does, it, it provides a more realistic and, and, um, more focused immersion in my opinion, you know, to actually have to pay attention to what you do. Um, I am absolutely guilty on some of these aircraft where you don't have to worry about it. You know, I'll just fly them however I feel like flying them. And, you know, we all know that's not particularly excuse me, particularly realistic. So, you know, it is nice to be able to have that restriction there. Um, I, I prefer things like that. Um, and then finally, uh, the last addition in this latest patch was including UA's lighting mod. Now let's talk about what UA's lighting mod is. UA's lighting mod, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well because it affects far more aircraft than just this one. There's a ton of aircraft uh, that are adjusted by this. If we step outside to the external view for just a moment here, let me turn the sim noise down. I want to make sure you guys can hear me nice and clear. Um, notice the bright halo coming off. Notice the white lighting versus that dull yellow lighting that we see up here on the street lamps. Notice the distance in which the illumination is taking place. I mean, it's really stretching out out there. And then everything from the pulse lights there on the aircraft, the recog lights to your nav lights. Let's go take a look at that, uh, the tail floodlight blinking down there on the bottom. Um, or not tail floodlight, the recog light. Um, and then even the tail floodlights. I mean, all the aircraft look absolutely fantastic. But whether it be your nose wheel steering or your nose wheel steering, your taxi light or your landing light, it really makes a huge difference to the performance of these lights. Let's go ahead and step back into the seat for just a minute. And let's see here. What do we have on right now? Let's turn the landing lights off. Actually, I'll turn them all off for a moment so you guys can see. And then we're going to turn the taxi light back on. And it's not quite as intense, okay? So your illumination is significantly less than what we were seeing with the landing light, um, but still very potent. You know, there's a reason why when aircraft pull up to the gates, as they turn towards the gate, they turn their taxi lights off. That's so they don't blind everybody on the ground. You know? <laughs> it's like, you know, I've heard it's important to see when parking an airplane. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyways... Uh, it's a very, very nice mod, and I really highly recommend it. Now, last thing we're going to discuss here is some customization options, which I'm sure some of you have probably already caught, it, caught into if you are familiar with flying the King Air 350i. Um, and that is, so first off, the cockpit lights. Notice the panel lights are all blue. Uh, that is a uh, mod that is an add-on with inside, uh, or an option with inside this mod. And your options are, let's see here, we have blue emissions text. I'm sorry. Um, oh, here we are. That's what I was looking for. Uh, we have white analog gauges with black pointers. Okay, so the final portion of this is customization. There are multiple customization options to the blue texting for the emissions of your instrument panel. You have uh, seat color changes that are option. Um, as well as gauge adjustments. Notice that we have blue needles here on the gauges. Um, there's a couple of different uh, options in there that you guys might enjoy. Um, just a really cool modification that gives you a little bit of both worlds, performance and customizations to make the aircraft sort of your own. So anyways, let's move on to the final mod or add-on that I want to talk to you guys about today. All right, guys, and the final add or mod that I want to talk on. Actually, I would talk about this as an add-on as it actually uh, creates a new aircraft entry in your in your hangar there. Um, and that is the uh, Captain Maddow's uh, Bonanza G36 Improvement Project. This project has already done a ton of things that makes the aircraft perform more closer to real-world um, uh, standard oper operating procedures and pilot's operational mm -hmm. handbook. However, he's added even more to it. So a couple real quick highlights to the latest update. 
You have the fixed missing altitude alert tone at 200 feet to go. Tweaked fuel flow as currently uh, current fuel flow was slightly less than the book figures. And once again, that credit goes to JD um, and his awesomeness uh, helping out here. That's always fantastic and great to see uh, that acknowledgement. So I'll make sure to put it here as well. And then fixed missing decimal point uh, to manifold pressure gauge. And then added sim update 8 prop modeling. Initial tests show aircraft now at most a one knot or 0.2 uh, away from the book figure. So the aircraft is point. Uh, flying speeds are darn near right on point. Now, we're going to talk about one other big thing with this pr particular improvement project that I absolutely love, and that is, let's get back up here, this guy right here. I know this is kind of uh, transparent, guys. That has to do with that UI mod that we talked about at the beginning, so uh, just bear with me on that. But there's a hanger right here. We're going to click on that, and what do we have here? This thing is so awesome. We have the hangar. This is for the Beechcraft G36 Bonanza. It is specific to this aircraft uh, and this improvement project. I think that's such a cool thing. You have required annual inspection, 100-hour service, uh, due in, uh, let's see, it doesn't look like any days at the moment, but due in 98.8 hours. We have a total of 1.3 hours and a total of 1.3 miles on this aircraft. So basically we rolled it out and that was about it. Scrolling down here, check out everything we've got going on. Uh, you have roadmaps, but not promises. I love that he put that in there because a lot of people will mistake a roadmap for a guaranteed uh, addition, and that's just not the way roadmaps work. So I do appreciate that, but check this out. Flight model gives you what the rating is. Engine system, model spark flowing, oil usage, etc. Tells you where you're at there. And then over here we have checklists and everything from startup, run up, and working your way through all of the individual procedures of the aircraft. Uh, pressurization, fuel flow targets. I mean, just really awesome information. I mean, this is everything for this plane, guys. Absolutely everything for that aircraft. And then, obviously, I have to wait until we hit that moment, but we're definitely going to get there um, when we reach the time where the aircraft must be serviced. Now, I will say that you have to make sure you are watching your... Um, uh, your mixture, because I know that you can foul the spark plugs if memory serves, and which obviously is going to reduce engine performance. But anyway, so adding much more realism, much more immersion to the aircraft. Uh, thank you, Captain Matto, for all your hard work with this plane. It is truly one of my favorite aircraft to fly. Um, I would say it's a battle between this one and the TBM 930, and I guess it really depends on what it is I'm doing in that particular flight, which one is my preference. But uh, they're both wonderful airplanes, and your work on this aircraft has been absolutely just marveled, and, and I love every moment of it. Um, so thank you for all the hard work guys. I hope that you have enjoyed these uh, three little additions and, and updates for Microsoft Flight Simulator more to come as the week goes on obviously as new mods get updated new features are coming out and we're going to keep checking those out. I'm really interested in doing a flight with the G36 with the updated propeller. Um, so we are definitely going to be doing that at some point this week as well. We're going to take her up do a full flight with it and see what it's like now. <clears throat> as always guys stay safe and healthy leave those questions comments down below and I will see you in the next one.